vintage camera collectors across the dial here and uh, I've been working on a few cameras this year it's almost unbelievable how many 35 millimeter cameras there are still out there and there's people interested in using them but of course they want them working because they want to shoot film I uh, work on all makes but I do have some favorites I've talked about a few in past videos but my absolute favorites are the Practicas. Before you go boo hiss, let me tell you why. That is a heavy camera, solid camera. This is a Practica TL1000. So it's after the MTL3, MTL5 series, basically the same camera. And this one, the case is mint, the camera's mint. I got this at a flea market for 35 bucks. Shutter's just so smooth on this one. Hope there's not film in it. Um, it has the Pentacon 1.8 50mm lens, which is the better lens. And I have a few of them. This is one that I actually just cleaned. They can get kind of grungy inside. You have to clean the shutter blades. That's for another time. But there's something about shooting with this camera. I'm I always like the feel, the way it winds up to your face, smooth focus, hit the button for light metering, listen to that click. That's just so nice and it weighs, I mean it's a heavy camera, there are a few that are heavier. I started out with cameras back in the early 70s. And initially I used my dad's Pentax Spotomatic 2, which he bought in 73. Um, he liked the camera. He didn't use it enough to get all the settings quite down pat. I just figured it out and started shooting film with it. As long as I paid for the film, I could use his camera. As long as I didn't drop it, I could use it. And I like the Pentax Spotomatics. I like the Pentax, um, any of the K1000 especially the Japanese built ones. I've had like, I don't know how many, 20 of them maybe. Um, I pick them up, I clean them up, I sell them. Um, make just a little bit of money on them. There's not a lot of profit in these. This one right here is an LTL3 that I just picked up yesterday. The reason it has this weird contraption on it, well the leatherette was peeling back here. This is where the hinged back door opens. And so I glued it and I had to figure something to hold it down. <laughs> you get the idea. This one has the 1.850 lens on it too. And it was very stiff and it was had fungus on the lens. So I had to take the whole lens apart. I'm telling you, you could have the camera on me for two hours. Some of them really are real pain. And very touchy to get those, those little diaphragm blades back in after you clean them in the lighter fluid. Basically, I use an air duster, some Ronsonol, rubbing alcohol, and for the leatherette, all oh, this stuff is the best. The page is carpenter wood glue. Anyway, when it came time to get my own camera, there was a store called ShopRite, if anybody remembers those, and they had these Practica LTL3s, and they were $99.99, which was a real price point on these. A Pentax was almost twice as much. And I remember going around to the camera stores back in the day, and every camera store kind of had a favorite. And I remember one place, this was a camera store, it was a British guy who'd come to Canada and uh, started a camera store. And I'd say, what's the best camera to start out with? And interestingly enough, he would say Pentax. Oh yeah, you gotta get a Pentax, right? That's the best. And uh, it's because he had used them um, for some, some job he had, like as a cartographer or something, he used Pentax cameras in the late 60s in Africa, and they said they really stand up to the heat. Great camera. Then there was another guy um, that was Russian background, and he, was, he had a camera shop, and he would say, oh, you've got to get the Zenit. The Zenit, that's the camera to get. Made in Russia, heavy, solid. Uh, and I'm not kidding, a Zenit is heavier than... Practica and I remember getting my hands on one one of my uncles had one and it's just like the controls were in the wrong place and everything but they stood the test of time they work great and they keep on going 
And, you know, if you're out in the woods and you're attacked by a bear or a wolf, well, you have your zenith, you know. You can use that to fend them off. Um, there's another store, and it was actually, they were so big on cannon. And this guy, this guy was like, well, you know, he says, I used to shoot in northern Ontario. I, I, was, I was in the army working around the dew line, and I used to, you know, shoot and... Canon is the best camera. I used those in, in the early 70s. Everybody seemed to have this story with them. Nobody liked the Practicas. That was the funny thing. And I remember the Russian guy saying, Oh, the Practica, no, bad camera, junk, falls apart. Well, this is the $99 is why I got an LTL3, which was a lot of money. It was more than a bicycle, anything like that at the time. I'm talking 1978. And uh, I remember I got it in that camera and I just loved the way it worked. And I used it for years and I kind of, you know how you go into this thing, you're, you're in the film for a while and then digital came out in the late 90s. And I thought, well, I've got all these film cameras. I don't use the Practica much. It was the one that I bought and I sold it to somebody that wanted it and it was working fine. And really, I kind of miss it because that's the one that got me started. But sometimes you sell things, you don't know why. Anyway, I bought it like several tail threes. I would say this year, this is the seventh or eighth one. They keep popping up, and that's the funny thing, and very cheap. I'll give you an example, okay? This one here, $40. Okay, no tax on it, the place I bought it. It was like a flea market place. And it took some cleaning, a little bit, you know, dusting, dirt, you know, dirt removal. Works great. I'll run a roll film through it black and white and process it here I'll sell it for around 60 bucks just get and you know the people that come to buy these they're all in their 20s a lot of them are art students and they're doing film there's a course at one of the universities near here and they want a working they want a camera they can put film in a manual camera with a light meter that's one thing about the K1000 and the Practica LTL series, nice manual camera with a reliable light meter. So that's kind of why I'm into these. And uh, whenever I can find them, they're reasonable. I buy them and take them apart and play with them. Thanks for watching and listening.